America is not a racist country. You know, one thing about this Brett Favre situation, it certainly sheds a lot of light on how different the media treats a black athlete and a white athlete because they act like they don't want to touch this story. But we have seen them diving headfirst into a story about a black athlete and they will keep the story alive as long as they can. So am I surprised? No, it is expected here in America. So Brett Favre's latest scandal revived a debate on how black and white athletes are treated differently. Absolutely. And the media has definitely made that very clear by avoiding the story. So the welfare fund scandal in, involving Brett Favre has left a lot of people reeling. A string of texts appears to show the Pro Athlete Hall of Famer pressuring former Mississippi Governor Phil Bryan, a Republican, about funding the construction of a volleyball facility. So remember, his daughter plays volleyball. So that was why he was making such a big deal out of getting this facility built. At the University of Southern Mississippi, Farb's alta mater. So, and it's where his daughter played sports at the time, uh, you know, so he had been misusing state funds and was potentially illegal per new court filings. The funding for the project was part of an investigation into a multi-million dollar misspent public welfare funds within the Mississippi Department of Human Services. So he, he just had a lot of other participants in the whole thing. It is unclear how the matter might unfold, but already it revived discussion about an age-old pattern. In wake of the scandal, white athletes seem to be treated differently from black peers. People believe there's just more vitriol directed towards black athletes when they commit wrongdoings or give the appearance of messing up. And I think that's more than fair. While no one is standing up for Farb, there isn't a loud cry that he should lose everything. The journalist Jamila Hill pointed out on Twitter, well, you know, look who controls the media. That should explain why it's that way. It says it all to me. Okay, people um, almost always want to pound the flesh when it comes down to black athletes. And it's often unrelenting. So sometimes it's not about the coverage, but the tone, she added. To further explore the issue, I spoke with Harry Edwards, a professor at UC Berkeley, whose research interests include race relations and sociology of sports. He's also an author of the 1969 book, The Revolt of the Black Athlete, about activism among black athletes. Our conversation has been lightly uh, edited for the length and clarity. Well, on one hand, I was familiar with the Favre history. Yeah, he's got a horrible history and he got away with a lot of things. Even when he was actively playing in the NFL, he got away with a lot of things. Even while he was playing in the league, so that uh, level, I don't think that something like this was outside the bounds of his capability, let's say. On the other hand, there was an awful lot of publicity around this case. He hasn't been charged with anything at this point, much less convicted of anything, 
but he's become the face of this tragic situation. No, but you know what? There's a lot of black athletes that are persecuted through the media and many of them were not charged or convicted of a crime, but you still drag them. Look at this affair that's out there. To me, that's a personal matter. I don't know why something like that is blowing up in the media. So you're saying out of all of the NBA, these are the only two people having an affair? Give me a break, man. Mm, please. The people who also should face the situation are the former governor, the people who administered funds, and so forth. But instead, because of his fame, uh, Farb has become the poster boy for ripping off poor people in the poorest state in the country. And that's where he belongs. He belongs on that poster. He belongs on that poster. So I don't know where you're going with this, but he is exactly where he should be. And his butt should be jailed for stealing federal funds. Absolutely, we look at the situation as part of the fabric of white privilege in the U.S. society. When a white athlete behaves in a detestable way, the incident tends to be uh, sport washed, which is typical when you are dealing with uh, athletic celebrity, but it's also white washed and that is white privilege. Yes, it is. An example, people talk for decades about Jack Johnson, the first black American world heavyweight boxing champion in his florandering, um, his casual relationships with women. He had several interracial relationships throughout the early 20th century. If you compare Johnson to Babe Ruth, who was white and also involved with various affairs, you couldn't get a credit card between them. But Ruth wasn't just sport washed, he was whitewashed. It became a situation of masculinity, proudness. But it became an issue with Johnson. So this goes back decades with uh, the whitewashing that goes on in combination with sport washing. Yeah, well, it's always going to be that way, y'all. It's always going to be that way. Athletic celebrity involves an investment by masses of people. I mean, what kind of allegiance does it take to walk around in a jersey with someone else's name on it. Well, people do that all the time. We know that. But the media is definitely responsible for the disparities and how the news is reported when it comes down to the athlete. You know, look, there are many things going on in this world. But I can tell you one thing. When you got somebody who earned a hundred million dollars or more in his career, and he's got to be out here getting all this money, it is, something is definitely up, you know? And yes, this is going to catch the attention of a lot of people. This is not the norm of what you see in the news, but it doesn't mean that he should get away with it. But the way you have this society all rigged up, don't be surprised if he just walks away from this with little to no punishment. Trust me, when it comes down to people like Brett, the punishment never fits the crime. It never does. So we can almost anticipate you're making a big deal out of it, but at the end of the day, you're going to do very little about it. And Governor Phil Bryan, he's far from innocent. He definitely should be, you know, out there and, and he should be charged. But 
because he's a former governor, more than likely they're going to let him get away with it too. That's one thing I do know. When you are a white male of status, yeah, they'll, they'll look for loopholes to get them out of everything. Look, they do this for the ones that are nobodies. How many times have we seen them walk away from crimes? So you know the ones that are well known by their names. Yeah, they'll they'll let them get off the hook each and every time. But look at how much they drag Colin Kaepernick for taking a knee. You would think he killed someone the way some of these people carried on. But what Brett Favre has done is far worse than taking a knee. Way worse. But y'all, please tell me what you think. I do believe there is a double standard, but y'all let me know what you think in the comment section. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.